Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this fancy smancy studded blazer. Yeah, and with the, um, just a simple like Forever 21 blazer, some studs, a few tools and everything else. So um, stay tuned and I'll tell you everything that you need and if you stay tuned to the very end, I model the blazer for you so that you can see how it looked on me and how it came out. And yeah, um, I think depending on like how much time you put into it, like if you just sit down and do it, it could take anywhere from like two to maybe three hours, which sounds like a long time, but for me I just kind of spread it out over a couple of days. Um, that's why like I have an outfit change and my shirt's a little bit different, but yeah. So it's a really fun project and I definitely think you guys will enjoy it, so stay tuned. Bye! Okay, what you're need, gonna need to do the blazer is um, tool-wise, I use an X-Acto knife. You're gonna need thread, and this is just black thread. The name rubbed off of the bottom, but it, I got it from Joanne, so it's just a black thread, and you can get um, any color thread that matches the blazer that you're doing. Um, this is a fabric marking pencil. You can either use this or you, but if you really don't care, you can use a pen. I used a pen to start out and then found this pencil, so either or. Um, just be let, let you know, the pencil will, not pencil, the pen will stay on the, the jacket, but if you cover it with your tool, it really doesn't matter, and the pencil kind of just rubs off, so. For us, you're going to need a screwdriver, and this is just a little one that I have from my little tool kit. It's a flathead, I believe. I think that's what it's called. Sun and all tools like, like I know what I'm talking about. You're going to need a sewing needle. Now, my needle is super duper thin. Really small, just because it has to fit through the holes of the rhinestones, which I will show you. These are the rhinestones that I used. I ordered them from dreamtimecreations.com, and it has all the information on them. So these are the SS34s crystal in the silver setting so SS34 is the size and it's about seven millimeters and these are Swarovski crystals and I wanted to do um I like doing Swarovski just because I feel like it gives it a better shine it looks a lot classier and yeah I know it's gonna last a long time and as you can tell you can see the little holes in the side of them and that's why I wanted a small needle so I can get them through the holes and I knew it'd be securely fit and um also, if you go to Dream Creations, they do have a bunch of different shapes and stuff. Like, they do have a lot of these shapes. They're just not, not all of them come with the um, silver setting here. Some of them just have the holes in them. I wanted the setting on them. The next things you're going to need are some spikes or studs, whatever you want to call them. And I ordered this from spikesandstuds.com. I'll try to put all the information in the bottom bar. So I ordered these ones, which is the size 4 silver cone spike and it's just that little spike right there and these ones which are the standard English 77 in silver and they're kind of like a little fatter stud and it has the um, full down prongs on it and you can see it I don't want to take it out there you go so it has like little fold down prongs you can kind of see it on this one this one that I showed you earlier a second ago is a screw in one and I like the screw in ones just because I know they're going to be nice and secure and um, the only thing, the only problem I had with the screw in ones is if I made a hole too big sometimes it would slip out but after I fixed it it was fine and then the last set of um, spikes I got are the size 13 silver cone spike and, um, and these ones are like the kind of taller ones and they're another screw in spike they're a little bit taller and I really like them so yeah and then so that's basically everything you need so let's get started all right so first thing you're gonna you're also gonna need a blazer which I totally forgot to say but this is the blazer that I chose this one is from forever 21 and I actually got it from Plato's closet it was only $12 you can kind of see the 12 written on there I really liked it um, I don't know, it's just, uh, I think it's a boyfriend blazer, so it's a little bit longer. But, yeah, so all the instructions are kind of going to be based off of this type of blazer. But it might, it should be fitting to all blazers also. Okay, so I already did this side off camera, just because I know it's going to take a while. 
And so now we're going to do the other side. So, I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's like padding inside of here. And it's super hard to get the um, spikes and everything through this padding. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up to the inner part of it. And you can see this stitch right here. We're just going to cut that out open with our X-Acto knife. And now I just need you guys to be really careful because these things are super sharp. And what I like to do is I like to pull the stitching kind of tight and just kind of slowly slip my X-Acto knife into the stitch like that. Maybe you guys can see, I'll zoom in. So you're just going to be cutting into the stitch and it's kind of like once you get the first one it tends to get easier. There you go and then you can kind of just pull it because now the stitch is pretty much all cut. Put the knife down. We're just going to pull as much as we can. You don't want to tear it and if you need to you can go back in there with your little exacto knife. Just slide it through. You don't have to use an exacto knife for this. You can now it's open. You have this nice little open little hole right here. And this hole is pretty much going to stay open the whole time that you're working because it's really important that you can actually get to the inside of the blazer. So now you can see on the inside there is this padding piece. And we're basically just going to, it doesn't just pull out. You actually do have to um, cut it slightly. So you can see there's a little bit of stitching right there, so it's not super in, it's not um, sewed in extremely well or anything. And for some people you don't even have to take, like the padding isn't actually sewn into the blazer, it's more sewn like um, on the outside of it. So you can just cut that off and it's so much easier, but for between one sews so there's inside the blazer. So we're just going to keep pulling it out till we see all the little seams. You can kind of pull out the excess string, it's not that important. And then you do have this little bit of flap in there, but that's okay, it's not going to affect your blazer. And some of you guys might be wondering, okay, when I like taking the padding out, it's not going to have that stiffness. But when you think about it, since they are spikes, as soon as you put your shoulder inside of here, it's just going to, it's going to stand up and it'll look really good. So, now we've got it all open. And so... What I like to do now is we're gonna lay both of these up here. Is um, look at where everything is, where everything lays, and lay it so both sides are about even. So you know your placement. Either you can have even placement or you can have random placement. It's up to you. But I always like to start with the screw and spikes first because that's going to require me to um, put holes in the jacket. So I kind of want to just be careful with the holes. And for my jacket, I'm only, um, I did 10 on each side. I'm going to do 10 on each side and of these spikes. And then, yeah, we'll just go along and go through there. So, you're going to take either your pen or your marking fabric pencil or whatever. And you're just going to kind of plan out where you want each spike to go. So for me, I'm going to try and make it as even as possible with the other side. And I know I have a spike right to the center here. And I'm just putting an X. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it right there. I just put an X on it. Right here. See it? Right there. So that's my first X. That's where I know my first spike is going to go. So you're just going to continue marking where you want all your spikes to be, all your tall spikes. And for each spike, I had a different style mark. Like I didn't have the same marks just in case I ended up deviating from the plan. So I'm just going to continue marking and then I'll come back. Alright, so now I have it all marked. You can see all the little 
X's, because X, X marks the spot. No, just kidding. X is where, um, was the symbol that I used to mark for my taller spikes. And you can see kind of the size of these. So now what we're going to do is take our X-Acto knife, and we're going to go inside the seam of the, sh the seam of the blazer, and kind of open it up so that it's not going to stab through the um, lining, but you kind of open it up to the actual blazer part. And then take your knife and you kind of just fold the collar down so it's not in the way. And then you just pick your X. I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to try to get this on camera. And we're just going to take it, holding it with our thumb and our index finger, kind of to hold it a little bit flatter. And we're just going to poke it through, but not too deep because we don't want the hole to be too big. So we're just going to poke it through a few times just to be sure that it went through. You can turn it a little bit. And then we're going to take one of the screws for the bottom of our um, spike. We're going to flip it and go through the inside. And you can see there's a little extra fuzzy part. And that marks where your hole is for the inside. And we're just going to get the screw in there. I feel like this is appearing much harder than it actually is just because I have to try and get it so that it's on camera. And you just push it through. See? Easy as that. And then you take your spike and you can just screw it on as much as you can with your finger. And then you flip it. And see, even when you flip it, since the lining is covering it, you can't tell if that spike's in there and you're not going to be able to feel it on your arm. But there's the screw. So we're just going to take our screwdriver and we're going to try to keep hold of the screw on the other side and twist it as tight as it goes. Simple as that. And then you have your first spike in there. And it looks like that. Gorgeous, right? Alright, and then we're just going to continue doing that through all our mark spots. And I'll be back. Alright, so once again, I have it all marked. You can see all my little dashes before I had done X's for these ones. I just did um, dashes for the next ones. And you're just going to do the same thing that you did with the longer spikes. You're just going to get your fingers in between the lining and the blazer. You're going to pick your first spot. I always kind of like to make sure I move back the lapel or the um, collar, whichever you call it, just so I don't stab it. We're actually, we're going to start in the farthest one back just because I feel like that's a little bit easier or harder, whatever. You can see the mark there, clear as day. I'm just going to stick it in. And then you can kind of see the little spot where I stuck it. And take this screw. This screw is a lot smaller than our previous screw. I'm going to take it, track it, flip it. So that you can see where you made the mark. I don't know if you guys can see that there is a tiny little spot right there. I'm going to place the screw there, flip it back around, and just push it through. And it's super simple, just like that. And we're just going to place our little screw top on there, or spike top, and twist it as far as we can with our fingers so it looks like that. And then we're going to take our screwdriver and just twist completely. Screw this as it goes, and then voila! And so now we have, oops, we'll stick, we have our little baby screws on there now, and then we're gonna do that for the rest of the areas, and I'll be right back. So now we've got the little studs all screwed in, looking fly, I must say. Um, it's all good. So they're all in. But this is how it looks so far, and now we're going to move on to the next step, is adding the next set of spikes. And these are the standard English 77s. And these ones, um, they are a lot easier to put in, actually. This is what they look like. And I, I don't use very many. I know for these, the tall ones and the small ones, I use 10 of each. So I just planted them wherever. You can use more or less, it's up to you. It's going to be your blazer. And then for these ones, I think I use like six or seven, so, yep. And now for this one, I will mark this spot so that it's slightly there. So I put an X, I don't know if you guys can see it. 
put an X for X marks the spot right there. And we're going to go through the jacket and just make sure my fingers are where that spot is so I don't stab it through the lining. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, place it, place a, a little indention or a little hole on the outer side of my X, not through the X, like so. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then we're going to take one side of the spike and just put it through that um, little hole that I made if I can find it again. Just like that. And it actually just, oops pokes right through the material. You don't have to actually cut these ones. Alright, so it just pokes right through like that. And then you just take it and you take the blazer and you flip it inside out. So you have your two little prongs right here. Like that. And you can see them. And what I do is the bottom of my little screwdriver, which just got the little grip, it has a little flat piece, so I just take it and I press down, oops, I press down one prong as far as it'll go, and then I take the other end of it, of my screwdriver, and I just push it all the way inside, like that. And then I do the same to the other side, I just, oops, take the screwdriver, push it down, take the other end, and push it all the way inside. Just so I don't have to worry about this ever, like, scratching me through the lining or anything, it's pushed down in there. And actually, I can show you, like, um, with the screw-in spikes, you can see them, they're all the screws in there, and they're inside the lining, so I shouldn't... I might feel the weight of them or some of the coolness, but I won't actually feel it on my skin. Like the metal metal to skin contact should not happen. And so that's the spike we just put in. We just fold it down and it is really sturdily in there. And so are the little screw ones. And now we're just going to continue placing those all along the jacket. And I'll be back. Alright, so now we have all our kind of like little chubby studs put in there and they're all placed pretty well there so the last detail we're adding to this you guys might be like oh my gosh there's so much to it but really it's it's gorgeous once it's all together we have our Swarovski crystals in the silver setting I'm gonna pour some of these out I think I used like 20 of these on the jacket and in this little package it was a let's see half of a gross which is about 72 to like let's say we'll say 70 to 73 of these um half a gross is actually the weight it's not so much the count but yeah so you'll have plenty 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 to do this and i really don't like to take out too many at a time because i often drop them so i just kind of set them to the side just a couple and get it ready so this is the time you're going to need your thread and my thread is black and it perfectly matches the jacket look you cannot even see it and we're going to take a pretty long piece I would say it's about a foot long and um, I actually don't know where my scissors are right now but I just need to cut this with scissors but right now we're going to cut it with the X-Acto knife and we're going to take our small needle and we're going to thread the needle so now we've got our needle threaded and we're going to Basically for me, for the placement of the rhinestones, it's more of a just filling in type thing. So, I don't know, we're just going to fill in blank areas of your canvas, if you'd like to call it that. So I'm going to put one in this area, like right about here. And now the thing with this is you can do it one of two ways. You can go in through under the lining this is the harder way I will tell you this is the much much harder way but it's the nicer looking way so you go into the lining and you take your needle and you have to kind of swim around in there and then you go back to the front make sure your needle doesn't jab through the lining or any other part and basically you kind of start poking your needle through where you want your stone to go so we're going to say about right there. You guys can see the needle sticking out right here. And you're just going to pull it through. 
and basically with your hand that's under you want to make sure that your thread is only going through the blazer and not through the lining and so now I'm going to take my stone here and it's got two holes on the side of it so through one side I'm going to stick my needle which it goes through pretty easily pull it down and then my, hand, my other hand needs to go back under and back through the lining so I know exactly where I'm sticking it and then you can just place it kind of place your needle kind of anywhere within a few with like within a centimeter or so of um, the other end of your thread I guess you could say and you just want to make sure that when you're pulling this through that it doesn't get caught in any of the spikes and also when you're pulling it through you just got to make sure you're not sticking it into the lining so okay I did now is just tightened it, make sure it wasn't through the lining. And I'm going back through, opening up the lining a little bit. Like that, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is it. So this is the end of my string, and so I know that the stone is right here. We're going to take it back right through, and then make sure it's in good placement of the stone. So I kind of just poke it through a couple of times. Like I said, this is the much harder way to do it. And so see, it's like right next to the stone. I'm going to pull it through once again with my back hand, making sure that it does not go through the um, blazer lining. And then I'm going to take the needle and place it through the other hole that, the, that has not been threaded yet. And just pull it through. And then once it's through on the other side... If you guys can see that it's now through on this side, we're going to take the same, we're going to take the thread and go right back through on the same side. So I'm going to try to get this close. So we're going to take it through on the same side. The thread is coming out of the um, stone. Once again, with my back hand, making sure to feel to make sure it's not going through the lining. I'm just going to pull it through, making sure it's not getting caught on any of the spikes. And it looks like that. So now we're just going to repeat what we did and we'll go back through on the other side. Pull our snug. And there you go. Then you have like a nice securely fastened stone and... I like doing it this way better than gluing it or anything because I know it will stay on there for a lot longer. And so now we're going to flip it over. And I do use a lot of thread for it just because I, I typically don't know how many times I want to pull it through. It kind of depends on the placement of the um, stone also. Just because I feel like it could get loose if I, I don't know. I feel like if it's higher up, like on my shoulder, I feel like it's easier to come off. But anyways. We're going to take either scissors or your exacto knife and we're going to cut like kind of far from the actual end piece like that. So I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit so you have a better view. I don't know if that's going to help any. And we're going to take the two ends and tie it. Tying. I do about three knots just so I'm sure that it's gonna stay just like that and so you can I don't know if you can see this but you can kind of see like this is the end part now and you can go back through with your exacto knife or your scissors and just trim it down so it's not so long anymore it was just long so you could tie it you can also trim the other end if you want to and now when you flip it over you have your stone super secure and it's not going anywhere and there you go and so now you're going to keep doing that process with all your other stones until it looks like this and it's beautiful and I will come back to you guys with my finished um, look so see you later alright hey guys so after all the sewing and twisting and whatever's. This is what my jacket, the blazer came out with. 
So I'm totally and completely in love with it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. So that's what it looks like. And like I said, the spikes pretty much stand up once your shoulder is in there. And, oops. Each side is not perfect. They're not both symmetrical or anything. So, you know, that was that. But I did, I love the way it came out. So I can show you what it looks like from the back. So there's not a lot on the back. It might be a little bit uneven. You might be able to tell. I don't know. That's just how it looks. And I think it's really cute and kind of like edgy. And so that is my little spiked, stud, rhinestone, girly, edgy blazer. Hope you guys love it um, as much as I love it. And I'm actually just wearing it right now. I'm wearing it just to model it for you guys. I'm wearing it with an um, Abercrombie shirt that I got when I used to work there. So. Yeah, that's how it turned out, and I am totally in love, and I cannot wait to wear this somewhere. And I think, thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later.